Today, let's look at a new Premiere Pro editing tip. In this video, I'll show you how to make your video edits smoother and more polished for scaling, upscaling, speeding up clips, for doing time lapses, or uh, other you know speed up purposes with a couple simple but powerful tricks. These add quite a bit of polish to your videos with only a couple of extra steps required in your editing workflow. I'm Epulsebox here to make tech easier to understand and more fun via free educational videos. For one of these tips, you will need Adobe After Effects along with Adobe Premiere. I'll be using the CC 2017 versions, but this should work back as far as CS6 and maybe even CS 5.5. Let's flip over to the desktop and get started. All right, switching over here to our editor, it is much colder down here, so it took me a little while to get set up. I've created a sample project in Premiere Pro. Over here on the left, you can see I do have a few sample video clips that we're gonna use for what I normally do in my tutorial kind of videos. And of course my cat is meowing now that I started talking. Over here we have uh, a few different images, one which will take up the full screen and I will scale up and the others are much smaller sizes. We have a video clip that we're gonna do some speeding up on. And then we have a video clip that we're just going to scale in on. And again, we are going to need after effects for the scaling portion but then the speeding up portion we will not and we won't for a couple other things so tip number one is when you are speeding up video clips i'm just going to drag on some footage here so we have some overwatch gameplay footage when you are speeding up video clips be it for pretty much any reason a time lapse a speed art uh, just speeding up something really really quick i do that in tutorials sometimes or unboxings if you're speeding things up so I'm going to speed it up here. Enable frame blending as the time interpolation. You can, if you right click your clip here and go to time interpolation, frame blending. Now it makes an individual frame look a lot more confusing as you've got a bunch of frames compressed together, but then the final result is so much smoother. Of course, when Premiere catches up on the previews here, uh, it doesn't like playing back 4K footage really fast. So I will render out and play a sample copy right now. But the final result is so much smoother than what it normally looks like without frame blending enabled, which is what this looks like right now. All you gotta do is remember to right click and hit that and your video automatically looks so much smoother. And again, this is super, super important for speed arts or time lapses is you want to enable that frame blending. And especially if you're doing 60 FPS, any extra smoothness you can get through that frame rate will just make your video feel a lot more polished. Now, if you're doing scaling, then I want to use After Effects for their motion blur for that. It makes your video look a lot better. So let's say we're starting right here. This is just footage for a tutorial in the future, but I want to zoom in on this little text box here. I want to zoom in on it. So normally what I would do is set my keyframes like I just did, and then wait a minute till I want to play it back for a couple of frames until I get to where I want to zoom in. Here's a bigger one that I want to zoom in on, so even better. And now I'll use the scale tool and scale in. Get it framed up here and we're good to go. That looks about right. Now if we play this back, I jumped way too far back. There we go. Pretty basic. Not too bad. Of course, the preview was blurry, uh, but I will play both versions in a second. But if we right click it and go to replace with After Effects composition, allow After Effects to load up and edit in there, I will show you literally just two ticks you have to make and save the project and you're good to go. When you open up an After Effects composition through Premiere for the dynamic link, it will automatically ask you to save it or else the dynamic link will not work. So go ahead and save it next to your original project files here. I'm just going to leave it as untitled because this is just a sample project and it will automatically open up that piece. Now, what I highly, highly, highly recommend doing is using After Effects Motion Blur. So enable Motion Blur and then you have to take it for that specific layer. And what that will do is whenever you scale it in, it will apply a little bit of motion blur, just like on a camera or a video game and make the smooth transition look way smoother. So then when we play it back,
It does not want to render those frames while I'm recording. Of course not. Why would it want to do that? Okay, well, I'll play the two. I'll just keep doing this. I'll play the sample right now. Here's what it looks like normally in Premiere. And here's what it looks like with motion blur through After Effects. Now that uses the Adobe Suites uh, dynamic linking, which allows it to link between After Effects and Premiere. And then you don't even need After Effects open. Whenever you render it, it will automatically open up that After Effects project in Premiere and render out that effect just automatically. It, it, this is why I love the Adobe Suite, is it's really, really powerful. So I use that. I recommend using that whenever you want to scale in on footage. And this works on images as well. I do this a lot with my screenshots is if I have a channel transition or a channel page here and then I want to zoom in on say the channel trailer play it back for a few frames then zoom in that was a little too far zoom there we go that looks good and then right click replace with after effects composition and enable motion blur and now the playback will look way way smoother now the blurrier or the the shorter your key, like the shorter the distance of your keyframes are, like the quicker you make it move here. Like if I were to drag these two together, the blurrier it gets when it moves. Like you can see that that gets super blurry just because of how drastic the motion is. You can play with that to get the effect that you want. You may not want that much motion blur or you may want a super dramatic, really quick motion blur. That's totally up to you, uh, but you can't really do this in Premiere in any way. It's also worth noting that when you when you replace a specific file with or a specific clip with an after effects composition it does get rid of any transitions you've applied to it so you do need to reapply those or just wait to apply them until after you've set that up it just automatically clears it out but then boom and playback preview is automatically pulled from after effects depending on the power of your computer it may not want to play back in the first place but that's okay and then i have one more extra bonus tip here and that is simply whenever you're using a smaller image like this like this is a YouTube comment and I recommend giving it a tiny bit of motion. So we're actually going to start it. It's going to have a rotation of about three and we're going to make it start right here and drag those keyframes to the beginning. And then towards the end, I'm going to zoom it in a little bit. So to give smaller images a little bit of motion, we're not going to give it a ton, just a little bit, maybe add a little drop shadow. And then also to have something in the background, not just your face, not just your screen, not just a black screen, have it and have it blurred out. So we're going to chop off this bit and then I have a preset for Gaussian Blur 45. And depending on the frame size of what you're scaling, you may need to scale it up about five or so pixels so that there's no black around the border or you can kind of look, you can use the repeat edge pixels in the motion or in the Gaussian Blur, but it doesn't look quite as good. And then we can also go in here and replace this image with After Effects and add motion blur to that as well. And what you end up with is a super polished looking result. Save that, bring it back in here, add my transitions, and let's see what this winds up looking like. It just looks really, really nice. And that's it, a couple simple tricks, but they can really make your videos look a lot more polished and a lot more professional. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, hit that like button, get subscribed for more tech videos. Check the description below or the YouTube card icon above for my playlist with other Premiere Pro and editing related videos, and I'll see you next time.